Now I want to talk about some examples of groups. So this is section 1.4 and it will be called examples. So, um, okay, and I will also discuss some basic properties, maybe in definitions related to group theory. So, uh, there are a lot of amazing examples of groups, we discussed a few already, but uh, today, so now I want to talk about the most fundamentals, the most kind of principle to various areas of math, at least, uh, especially um, those we encounter in this class. Um, so, it is very typical in math, especially in algebra, to start with kind of the smallest or the most trivial one. So, what is the smallest group? If you want to see what is the smallest group, you need to look at uh, the definition and see what is, what should exist there. So, definitely one axiom says that unit exists. So, the smallest group can have, has at least one element. Empty set is not a group. So, uh, example one will be a group G, which is just a set with one element. And then this element has to be a unit. And uh, then, of course, E times E is E, and E inverse is E, and it's completely trivial to check that all definitions hold, and this is a group of a symmetry of whale I described at first class. So, this is the most simple group, appears all the time. Um, okay, so uh, the next example is uh, somewhat... Uh, somewhat strange at first. So, uh, one of the simplest groups and the most important is just a group of integers. And you can say, but how so? When you multiply integers, you don't have inverses. Fractions are not there. But uh, the operation is addition here. So, um, uh, what it means, it means that, that when you multiply sort of the element n times m so this is sort of in a group theory sense, is just n plus m. This identity or unit element is zero, and the kind of n inverse in group sense is minus n. So uh, of course this is the usual integers, and all axioms are uh, clear from properties you know. So um, so this convention for writing sum instead of a product, zero instead of unit, and minus instead of power minus one, uh, is uh, very common in group theory, uh, when you have a group where the order does not matter. And Z is one of those groups. So let me give a definition here. So a group G is called Abelian for uh, Nils Henrik Abel, uh, a mathematician who solved the, uh, who proved that equation of degree five doesn't have solutions um, in radicals. The fact I mentioned uh, in the first lecture. So um, he studied groups deeply because of all this theory, and so uh, that's in honor of him. Um, if for every two elements, g1, g2, and g, we have g1, g2 equals to g2, g1. So this is a definition which makes out of this complicated, not necessarily commutative structure, something much simpler. So in abelian groups, order does not matter. A lot of important uh, groups are abelian, but uh, a lot are not. So this one is a billion. And of course, usually people will just denote it by Z. Okay, so um, then of course one can sort of extend this example. So one can take Q with addition operation, one can take R with addition as operation, one can take complex numbers with addition as operation, and honestly, one can take any field with addition as operation, or even one can take a vector space. So this is a vector space. So if you have uh, taken linear algebra class, and I guess all of you had, 
you uh, might know what a field is. If by any chance, so this is a field. If by any chance uh, you miss that, please uh, uh, look it up. You can look it up on Wikipedia or anywhere. Field is, again, this algebraic structure where can you add, multiply, everything is commutative. It behaves very much like one of those uh, familiar number fields, uh, fields of numbers, Q, R, C, and so on. So this all groups are uh, very simple uh, in terms of their kind of structure, and they are all abelian. So these are all abelian groups, all abelian. Okay, so um, next example is, so let's look at multiplication. So you can take any of these examples and look what multiplication does to it. And Z is not a group because you cannot divide. And for instance, Q is also not a group because um, the problem is, is that uh, you can't divide. But uh, there is this one element, zero, and we know that zero doesn't have an inverse. And so the idea is to just take away zero. So uh, the notation is Q star, uh, so this is this multiplication symbol, Q cross, uh, is just Q without zero. And uh, so Q cross with just usual multiplication is a group. And this is because you can divide and you have one, which is here, the identity, and, and all other properties are obvious. And similarly, you can say C cross, R cross, and even um, uh, F cross for every field is just F without zero. So these are all um, good examples. And again, all the stuff is abelian. So far, it seems that, that just all groups we encounter are abelian. So uh, last abelian group I want to mention in this sequence of examples is um, example number five, um, is uh, slightly more complicated, extremely important for what will follow. So, uh, so let n uh, be some positive integer. So uh, positive integers are, at least in convention, I take one, two, three, four, and so on. So zero is not there. And then, so z over n z uh, is um, uh, remainders modulo n. So in questionnaire, I asked you whether you know what this thing is, and it's absolutely vital for this course. So we will do some uh, refreshment on that, and I will discuss it from various perspectives later on in the course, uh, but just very briefly. So the idea is that this group has just n elements, which I will call 0, 1, and so on, n minus 1, uh, in brackets. And, and you can think of this just as n elements, but when you do a plus b, the answer will be remainder mod n of a plus b. So you write down a plus b, divide by n with the remainder, the remainder goes here. So, so this is uh, the structure of the group. And, and um, it has n elements. Um, zero plays the role of the identity. And um, this, if, if you want to take minus class of k, um, in my definition, it makes sense to take it as n minus k. Because you know that n minus k plus k equals to n gives the remainder 0 modulo n. So uh, if this is a little bit confusing, again, you can read about that. It's pretty simple. Or you can wait until we discuss this in great detail um, in about uh, maybe a week and a half or something like that when we talk about cyclic groups. So that's again abelian. And these two examples, z over n z and z, will later substitute what's called cyclic groups. They appear a lot. So um, uh, where do they appear? So the simplest example is, for instance, uh, probably if you uh, have been in a restaurant 
uh, was a long bills, you know, that when you are given a long bill, it's hard to check whether everything is correct. At least if you want to check arithmetic, which probably happens when the bill is handwritten, you can just look at last digit and see whether last digits add up. And this is where you will use Z mod 10Z arithmetic. So you will look at just last digits and when you add two last digits of a number, you just take the last digit of the sum. And this is how you can check at least approximately that if you're given a long sum of numbers giving you something, at least it's not complete nonsense if the last digit uh, is correct. So this is Z mod 10 Z arithmetic. If you look at numbers just even or odd, this will be Z over 2 Z arithmetic because there are two elements in this group, 0 and 1. You can think of 0 as kind of representing even numbers, 1 odd numbers, and the rule is odd plus odd is even, odd plus even is odd, even plus even is even. So this is exactly multiplication table in this group. Maybe it makes sense to write down multiplication table for z over 3z. So this one appears uh, in homework. So it has this three element 0, 1, 2, and I will not write brackets. I just honestly don't, don't want to. You'll see why when we discuss them. And then you just take sum of each two elements and you, put, you can put sum here. 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2 plus 1 is, I can say 3 here, but, but I, according to my rule, I need one of these elements, 1, 0, 1, 2, so I will just look at remainder mod 3, and I get 0, 0, uh, 1. And by the way, so one of homework problems is about multiplication tables. So multiplication table is a table where you write down an element in a group, here and there, and just multiply them uh, in each term of your multiplication table. And one of the properties of multiplication table is that in every row and in every column, you will see just all elements of the group in some different order. 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1. 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1. And, and uh, this is something which uh, you'll have to prove uh, uh, in your homework. Okay, so this was a bunch of examples. All these groups are abelian. So next I want to discuss not abelian groups, which are maybe richer in general. Okay, so I don't remember how many examples I had before. So let me just say examples, example n. So, the next one. And the next one is uh, very important. Let me say K. I will have N very soon. So, uh, it's very important. So, uh, consider um, a set with K elements. So I can even say 1, 2, and so on, k. Let me call it a. Um, but I can label them as I like. So uh, a permutation, permutation uh, is a bijection from a to a. Let me call it pi. So it sends every i inside of pi of i. So, um, so permutation is just a map from a finite self set to itself, which is one to one and surjective and, and injective, so bijective. So um, set of all n factorial permutations. Uh, is a group, which is called Sn. So Sn are elements here are these bijections. So um, and 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 uh, of course I need to say what is an operation. So operation is just composition. And, and the reason is very simple. You have, you know, a set, and then you have a map, and, and I will just draw it like this, A, A, 
that's a bijection. And then I have another copy of my set A, and I have another bijection, sigma, tau, and then I can do the composition sigma tau. Mm, but you should be careful here, you first write tau, then sigma, because you first kind of move by sigma, then by tau. So if you apply it to any element, you first do sigma, then tau. And, and uh, that's uh, that what is a composition. And definitely, if you have two bijections, composition of bijections is a bijection. So n factorial, because you can count all bijections from a set from with n elements to itself, and you will get, uh, sorry, I wanted n elements, n elements. And um, you will get uh, that the number is n factorial. You need to see where you can send one, where you can send two. For one, you have n options. For two, you have n minus one options, and so on up to n, where you have no options um, except just one. So eventually, n factorial. Okay, so let's look at some examples and also notation. So uh, notation sigma inside S n uh, usually uh, uh, people write as follows. So you just write all elements of your set, which in my case are one to n, and underneath you say for each of them where it goes, and you get this sort of two by n matrix if you wish, where where you have just one where one goes, two where two goes, and where n goes. So if you take so if you take n equal to 1, then you will get uh, S1, and there is only one bijection from a set to itself, and this is just the group with one element E. And uh, if you take uh, n equal to 2, then you actually have two bijections. So one of them is sending 1, 2 to 1, 2, and this is just does nothing. And the other sends 1, 2, 2 to 1, flipping two elements. This prototypical, oh sorry, this is a set, I mean. That's a prototypical kind of example of a group uh, corresponding to this uh, flipping kind of symmetry. So if you take n equal to 3, this is where things start to be interesting, and you get S3 having six elements, and, and let me just write them down. One, two, three goes to one, two, three. This one is the identity. Uh, one, two, three goes to one, three, two. One, two, three goes to two, one, three. One, three, two. One, two, three goes to uh, two, three. One, two, three, two, one. One, two, three goes to two, three, one. 1, 2, 3 goes to 3, 1, 2. That's it. Six elements. And we already saw this group when we discussed a triangle, and we somewhat um, agreed that, that uh, symmetries of a triangle just correspond to these transformations. And S4 already has uh, 24 elements, and a typical example is something like 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1, or something like this. So if you want to multiply them, I mean, let me let me take a power, for instance, of this element. 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 2, 3, 4, 1. So if you want to compute second power, square it up. Then you just need to see where each element goes. 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, so 1 goes to 3. And then 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 1. 4 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2. That's it. And similarly, you can compute any product. So, um, by the way, uh, I didn't say why it has inverse. So, inverse of a bijection is a bijection. That's why uh, it has inverses. And if you want to do this 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, 3, 4, 1 inverse, uh, so, of course, you just need to do it backwards, and you know what is backwards. 1 will go to 4, 4 is going to 3, 3 is going to 2, 2 is going to 1. So it's kind of convenient to just first flip it. 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then just reorder stuff so that we'll see uh, uh, where 1 goes, and where 2 goes, when there are 3 goes, when there are 4 goes. So. Again, uh, so unfortunately or fortunately, this is an advanced course. So what it means, it means that that uh, we don't do uh, very simple things. Uh, you need to do them on your own. One of the simple things is learn how to multiply permutations. So practice 
with multiplying permutations. So just take your favorite 12, S12 group and multiply this two 12 permutations out of 12 elements and see how it goes. So uh, I'm not going to put any homework problems where you need to multiply permutations, but this is a skill I, uh, I need you to have very kind of handy. So uh, that's about it. So last thing I want to maybe say just one word about kind of philosophy behind this group. So we will study it in great detail next week. So the whole week will be basically about SN. So the name of this group is symmetric metric group. That's standard name. Group of permutations as well. And um, so, so uh, philosophically, you can think of it in the following way. So, you know that, I don't know, 5 equals to 5. That seems like a complete tautology. But if you think a little bit about that, uh, you notice that actually this is already interesting statement mathematically because what it means, it means if you have any five elements, set with five elements, and another set with five elements, then there is a bijection. So uh, why it means that? Because, um, I mean, suppose you have some number, like very big number of, of um uh, apples and oranges, and you want to say the two numbers are the same. So what that means? That means that you can actually sort of, for every uh, orange, you can associate to it some, some apple, and in this way you get this one-to-one -one correspondence. So that is uh, as the meaning of the word that two sets have the same number of elements, or five equals to five. And an observation is that actually, though five is kind of just one number and equals to itself, it's a very boring statement, but behind it, there are five factorial, so 120 ways to associate five elements to five elements differently. And this structure, this way of saying why five equals to five, or prove that five equals to five, is governed by symmetric group. So, um, if you wish, understanding properties of Sn is kind of a deeper way to understand number n. And you might think, okay, so what interesting can I say about this number? But uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, right now none of you have 6 as your favorite number, but it might happen that after the course a lot of you will uh, have this uh, number 6 as your favorite number, because for instance S6 is a very specific group among symmetric groups having what's called exceptional automorphism, and we will discuss it in great detail later on. So this is some structure, basically of number six, property of number six, which is, which is absolutely miraculous. Um, but in general, so a big part of math is just studying this SN groups. Um, in the next section, I want to discuss when we think of two groups as being equal, what is a subgroup, how two groups are, when it may be related to each other, and uh, um, after that, uh, we prove uh, our first um, interesting theorem uh, about finite groups.